My name's Ramona Leroy and I have a medically fragile son, Brayden Leroy, who's been at Hope's home for the past seven years. For Brayden, his overall condition is undiagnosed. He does have a rare seizure disorder called infantile spasms. He is on home oxygen. He is tube fed as well. He actually got pneumonia. Um, and that's when we, he was diagnosed with infantile spasms. And since then, he has about 20 times had pneumonia. He's had RSV, he's been on life support once, but he's come through all of this. So he's a fighter. We're the McNeil family, and Quinn and Charlie Elliott, and Colin and I'm Melinda. So Quinn was born in 2001, and he immediately spent three weeks in the hospital in intensive care, and nobody was quite sure you know, what the situation was. And eventually we had genetic testing, and he has a very rare genetic condition um, that doesn't even really have a name, just a genetic description. We spent a year in the hospital with just trying to get seizures under control. Brayden does have an uh, older brother, older sister, and a younger brother. We've not only been in hospital here, but we've been in hospital for in Saskatoon, we've been to Edmonton. Sometimes it's really hard on the kids, you know, they've spent birthdays beside Brayden when he's hooked up to a machine. It was a little scary. I know I remember going home and crying and asking, you know, what are we going to do? I felt very alone as a parent and being a parent clearly of a, of a disabled child is what did that and I didn't know, no, I could, couldn't relate to anybody. So I felt very cut off. No. I think when he was quite young there were um, a number of very scary moments. Um, just in terms of concern for his life. The first time he had a seizure, we didn't know what that was. And I, you know, it's very scary for any parent that sees that for the first time, because uh, you don't think it's going to stop, and you think he's going to die. Sometimes I wonder how different it'd be if Quinn could walk and talk and like be able to come outside and play basketball or play football or do the things that like, me and Charlie are able to do. What's so scary is the point I've been in where I think I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like I, I don't think I can actually do this. So then you feel horrible as a parent. I heard about Hope's Home through the home care um, and the hospital services. And it was really scary to apply because um, Brayden had such complex needs. I was worried, can somebody actually take care of him? She said, oh no, no, you don't need to worry about that. He has seizures and he ha I know what, what he needs and we have nurses here. And I said, I, I don't think you know, I, I don't think you know what you're talking about. It's right. And truly shocked that somebody said I could, I could just bring my child to daycare and then leave him. I just told Colin uh, he can go tomorrow and I don't think I really necessarily believed it or even understood what that really meant um, but it was probably the first time that I was treated as a typical parent. I'll never forget the moment that we were accepted into Hope's home and it's been you know seven years later he's still here. We were told once, you know, Brayden's never going to be able to lift his head. You know, he's never going to be able to sit up. He started holding his head up. He was able to extend his limbs. He's been sitting up on his own. Quinn's been at Hope's Home for 10 years, just over 10 years now. I don't know how we could have done it without Hope's Home. It changed from being the family or the, the mother who was waiting for the bad news to being like the other mothers I felt who waited for those little milestones, like when we got the note that um, Quinn sat at the table and had lunch with his friends. It was the most, it was, it was so crazy. Never expected that to happen. I guess those aren't typical milestones, but you feel like he's doing things with typical kids. We live a, a normal life. It's just nice to have that inclusion 
not only like in a daycare setting, but out in the world as well. I think what we realize now, if we look back and look at our experience, is that it's the support that allows us to have a bit of independence and function like a normal family that is crucial. I think that the entire 10 years that Quinn's been going there, I have never felt he wasn't in the best hands that he could possibly be in. I think that the staff there has been not only professional, and not only do I feel I can rely on them, but they've always loved him. And I think that, and we've felt that all the time. And so to have that combination of security and also love at that place, I think is pretty awesome. When I talk about Hope's Home, it is always about the staff. And I know rather our family feels that they could never thank them enough for everything they have done. If I could say one thing to all the aunties and uncles that came across our path in this life so far, I would want them to know that they're appreciated and they're loved for their open hearts, their acceptance. You see that when you walk into Hope's home that nobody's different here. He's not gonna be just left sitting there in his wheelchair. He's gonna be stimulated. He's gonna be included. He's gonna be taken on outings, you know? And that's what's important. This is where we go every day. These are our family and we really do appreciate them and love them just like they are our own.